welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and as always, I've got a very special guest for you. You're definitely going to enjoy tonight's episode. I've got Claudine Mokomabano, who's actually the Kukindio of the Rwandan Orphan Project. She'll be with me for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Hi, my name is Stephanie Miles, and I am Miss Caribbean United States 2013, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And like I said, the next 30 minutes, if you always want to know about Rwanda, we're just switching it up a little bit because I've got Claudine Mokomobano here with me, who is my guest. She'll tell you everything that you definitely need to know, especially as a Kukindio of the Rwandan Orphan Project. I love it. So, Claudine, welcome to Beyond Focus TV. Thank you for having me. I really feel touched to have you here because it's not every day that we get to have a Rwandan genocide survivor mm -hmm. in our seat. And you'll go into more details as the show progresses, but it's a lot to absorb. You know, it's something that happened long ago, but not too long ago still. It's still mm -hmm. very fresh in a lot of our minds. Why don't you tell us about life growing up in Rwanda before the genocide? Um, thank you. Um, before the genocide, uh, I had the joyful, wonderful uh, childhood. My mom, she was, uh, uh, she was so proud of me and then uh, she was loving mother and then she was a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see in our picture, we used to pray every day, every night, mm -hmm. me and my brother, my, my mom. Um, <coughs> so, um, growing up, like, was it one of those things for you that you were close with your entire family? How many brothers and sisters, first of all? I had one a brother, one sister oh. for my mom, yeah. So, um, and then I had a, a, a old sister. Um, my old sister, I mean, <laughs> I feel I want to talk immediately about genocide, but let me let me uh, talk about, uh, like you asked me, the, the joyful life we had mm -hmm. in Rwanda. So my mom, she introduced me to the youth Catholic movement, uh, where I learned how to act, how to dance, how to sing, uh, how to be on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I loved to play soccer um, and basketball. So all these helped me to become a, a wonderful uh, a student in school. I was a brilliant. I got uh, first grade. I was always get an A plus. So mm -hmm. my mom, she was uh, very proud of me. So you had a lot of a, a great childhood. You're enjoying life, and to you, this was normal. And then all of a sudden, just like that, political warfare, genocide. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed life. Of, I was good in math. Uh, my my dream was to get a PhD in mathematics. Uh, I was. I used to tell my mom that, uh, oh, when I get PhD in mathematics, I would treat you as a queen. You would be sitting there. People would wash your feet. People. I would have uh, many employees would be working for you. Mm -hmm. So my mom she used to laugh on me. Uh, so when the genocide happened, I was a teenager. I was in the f like a second year of high school. Oh wow! Uh, I was studying math physics. Uh, so. Genocide, during the genocide, they killed, uh, was a Hutu, they killed the Tutsi. Uh, government uh, did propaganda for many years, over like 30 years, and then uh, they mobilized uh, Hutu, which was majority, right. to kill minority Tutsis. So during the genocide, I lost, I lost uh, my parents were killed. Mm. Um, very my grandparents, uh, thank you. My grandparents were killed. My uncle, my auntie, uh, my uncle's wife and their children, and my auntie's husband and their children. So I lost my uncle, my uh, my auntie, and my cousins. My <coughs> big sister, uh, old sister, sh they they raped her and then they cut her with machetes. Oh, so wow. um. 
yeah, I thank God that I survived. Now, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they had the Hutu and the Tutsis. Did they, how could they tell who came from which? They were looking for the nose and then also the shape of the body. If you're sneak, if you're skinny, sorry, if you're skinny and tall, uh, they qualified you as a Tutsi. And then <coughs> this qualification were introduced to our uh, people a long time ago during the colonialism. When the Belgians mm -hmm. came to colonize our people, they did what they call divine and conquered. So they did measurement of the nose. Oh, Those who had a wow. big nose, they called them a Hutu. Those who had a small nose, they called them a Hutu. I mean... Those who had small nose, they called them a Hututi. Those who had big nose, they called them a Hutu. So then they give to them uh, ID card. Oh, so that's a, that is ID card during the genocide we're following. If you saw movie Hotel Rwanda or sometime in the airport, you will see that uh, on the checkpoint, people, the killer, they, ha they were asking people to show the ID card. So when they were looking in the ID card, they were looking in the ID card and then they look on your face. Mm. If you had a small noise, doesn't matter if even if in your ID card it shows that you are Hutu, but as long as you have a small nose, they were like, you are Tutsi, you need to be died. And there was no repercussion for that. They had the authority to go ahead and do that. How was that fear for you as a young girl, you're a teenager living through this? How long was the entire genocide at it last? A um, hundred days. Uh, that's when the mass killing stopped. Uh, but uh, after even a refugee camp, who to continue to kill the Tutsis over there? And yeah. that's a lot. Oh my goodness. That is such an interesting topic. And when we come back after the break, I want to talk about the orphans. Of course, this is a huge project that you're overseeing here in America. And I want to talk about the promise that you made Everybody, you're not going to want to miss this. My guest for the evening, Claudine Mukamabano, right here in the hot seat on Beyond Focus TV. Don't forget, June 15th, Father's Day is approaching really, really quickly. Stay with us. We got more Beyond Focus TV right after this. presents its third annual Father's Day Gala at the prestigious Crystal Manor, 1460 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, Sunday, June 15th at 6 p.m. It's going to be a night to remember with live performances by vocalist Shamira Mighty, Monvolino Alexis, and music by DJ Duvert. Our honorees for the evening include Nancy Miller, Executive Director and CEO of Visions VCB, Lisa Escaliz, President and CEO of Inventing A to Z, Dr. Melanie Samuels, Executive Director of the bed Campaign Against Hunger, Lambert Janit, CEO of Dramcam Productions, Farah Louis, Community Activist, and publicist. Marie Ulanu Seb, Firestarter and CEO of C2C. Robert Saran, VP of Kodak Po. Our keynote speaker for the evening will be none other than Ruben Durancy and hosted by yours truly, Lydia Patel of Beyond Focus TV. It's a five course meal, open bar with valet parking. Come out and support this evening of elegance and class and support our Father of the Year. For more information, call 917-873-3996 or email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. It's the third annual Beyond Focus TV Father's Day Gala at 6 p.m. Sponsored by... Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and I'm sitting down here with Claudine Mokamabano, who's the Kukindio of the Rwanda Orphans Project. And I wanted to talk about that because a lot of people are like, so what is that? What does that even mean? So tell us about the orphan project that you've been working on for many years and working very hard at it. And before that, the promise that you made. <laughs> um... I founded an organization called Why Do I Exist? Kukindi Ho Rwanda Offering Support Project um, uh, to, with a mission to help 
and uh, I did one that all friends and then also um, to be their voice, uh, especially the, the orphans who live by themselves. Because of mm -hmm. genocide in Rwanda, we have uh, over a million of orphans. Wow. So we have uh, many young adults now. They are in, in, in a, a, a 20s, 20s, 25, 20, 27, even 30. They are taking care of the young siblings. Because of genocide, their parents were killed. Their grandparents, their uncle, their cousins, everybody. Yeah. So they left by themselves. So these young adults, they're taking five, two, three siblings. So they sacrifice their future life in order to help the young siblings. Some of them, they drop out of the school. Yes. Because uh, if they go to school, no one will stay home to take care of the young siblings. So um, that's uh, what my project focus on. Um, yeah, which really uh, I'm glad I am doing it because it's a promise. I promise it to God. During the genocide, when uh, I was uh, jumping over the body of the people, uh, the children were being killed in my right, in my left side, even in my right side, mm -hmm. even in the front of me. So uh, I never thought that I would survive. Right. But I committed a vow. I said to my God. That time, the moment I was by myself with God, I said, Lord, if you save my life here and I survive, I would help orphans. I didn't know that I would survive because uh, many people were being killed. I was like, me, I'm, I'm going to be died in a few minutes. Right. But let me make this promise. If God saved me, I will help our friends. So before my dream was to get a PhD in mathematics because I'm good in math, yes. I was a... Uh, I was a, I was you know I was brilliant in school I was I get A plus um, even when I won a scholarship to go to <coughs> secondary school I, I went to straight to math physics mathematics and physics mm -hmm. so I was good I was like I get I will get my PhD and then I will take care of my mom I will make her be right. so the happy old dream proud. that you had yeah so at that time and then I was like I would design something like other scientific people do. Uh, like uh, we studied in school, the, the invention of Pythagon. I was a pyramid. I was like, mm -hmm. I would invent something uh, which a student will learn in school. That was the dream I had uh, when I was in the elementary school. By the time I made a promise to God, then my mind was like, so how are you going to do this? Immediately at that time, I right. was like, hmm. So that, that means I will no longer study mathematics to get a PhD in math. I will study business to or make money and to help our friends. So then uh, after I survived, I went back to school to study. I wanted to study economic, but uh, I ended up studying business. <coughs> and then um, after I established my organization to help our friends. And how has that been for you? Let's fast forward a little bit. You've been doing it. How many children have been helped through your organization? Uh, right now, we when we started, we had a 200. But right now, we have uh, we are working with different orphanages now. And then uh, we are working also with uh, different schools. In Kigali, we have uh, uh, Muima Primary School and St. Famille Primary School. And then uh, we, we recently we adopted uh, uh, orphanage, Kim Sagar Orphanage. You will see the picture mm -hmm. where uh, this past Saturday, actually, uh, the lady, her name is Ola. She went there to visit, um, to visit the old friends with my team, my uh, my team in Rwanda. So um, uh, she even gave them gifts. They were very, they were very happy that she came because uh, if there is something our friends love is to see somebody come to visit them face to face. It sh it shows them that somebody care, love, which. We really miss when we don't have our parents. So mm -hmm. um, now through social media, through Facebook, through my website, I reach out to many orphans. I, right. I reach out to many survivors. Uh, most of them, they follow the tips I give on, on social media, how to build your self-esteem, how to become so confident, how to follow your dream, how to be who you are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, recently, I... I organized, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I organized a training to overcome the trauma. Yes. I, I met this lady on Facebook, Susan. Uh, you can see here in the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we met Susan. Mm -hmm. Susan, um, mm -hmm. from, uh, she lives in New Jersey. 
I introduced myself to her. I asked her if she can come to Rwanda to train my orphans how to overcome the trauma. I did the International Trauma Studies in 2011, 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. I graduated in International Trauma Studies, but I didn't know how I can teach other people. I know the techniques I can use to help people, but right. I am not qualified to teach. So when I met her on Facebook, I was like, can you please come to teach my orphans? She was like, of course I will come. So we meet on, on the internet via Facebook uh, mm -hmm. in October first to first in November, and then she come to Rwanda in December. So she trained my old friends. This lady, she, they cut her arm off doing the genocide, level wow. cut. Uh, she told me, when I told them to send me the, like a feedback about what they learned, she told me that uh, since 1994, she never did any exercise because in school, teacher used to tell her, you can't do anything with only one arm. Just sit down, wait for other students to do exercise, and then when they finish, you can join them. So she spent uh, 20 years without doing any anything. exercise because they, they, they were telling her that you can't do anything with one arm. And your self-esteem. <sighs> unbelievable, unbelievable. And then she said, now I am okay. I can do exercise. I can. Uh, I, I, I started to teach other orphans how to do exercise with one arm. And then she said, I may not carry them, but I will sit down, comfort them. I said, if there is something I am proud of, I even posted this on Facebook, I said, mm -hmm. if there is something really I'm so happy that I did, is this project. Because we healed her heart. We, we changed her life completely. Absolutely. And something so small like that could be so significant. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. We'll just take a quick break. This this discussion is so touching for me because, mm -hmm. like I said, you're a wonderful guest and we're really informing everybody about this. Stay tuned because we got Claudine Mukamabano coming up for one more segment right here. And of course, check out our website, info at beyondfocusedmedia.com if you want to send us an email about tickets for Sunday, June 15th. It is Father's Day and it's coming up at the beautiful Crystal Manor. I'll be there hosting it. Keep it right here. <laughs> Beyond Focus TV presents its third annual Father's Day Gala at the prestigious Crystal Manor, 1460 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, Sunday, June 15th at 6 p.m. It's going to be a night to remember with live performances by vocalist Shamira Mighty, Monvolino Alexis, and music by DJ Duvert. Our honorees for the evening include Nancy Miller, Executive Director and CEO of Visions VCB, Lisa Escalese, President and CEO of Inventing A to Z, Dr. Melanie Samuels, Executive Director of the bed Campaign Against Hunger, Lambert Janit, CEO of Dramcam Productions, Farah Louis, Community Activist and Publicist, Marie Yulanu Seb, Firestarter and CEO of C2C, Robert Saran, VP of Kodak Po. Our keynote speaker for the evening will be none other than Ruben Durancey and hosted by yours truly, Lydia Patel of Beyond Focus TV. It's a five-course meal, open bar with valet parking. Come out and support this evening of elegance and class and support our Father of the Year. For more information, call 917-873-3996 or email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. It's the third annual Beyond Focus TV Father's Day Gala at 6 p.m. Sponsored.
name is Stephanie Miles, and I am Miss Caribbean United States 2013, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and I've got Claudine Mukamabano here with me, who is a survivor of the Rwanda genocide and doing some fantastic work here in the community and still a lot of work back home. Even though you are living in America, Rwanda is still your home. You have a great attachment to that. And you mentioned something very interesting off air to me when I asked you about when is the last time you went back. You're like, well, I'm always home, but physically I haven't been back since a certain date. How does that make you feel that every day you still make Rwanda a little part of your life? It's my promise. It's a promise uh, I promise to God that if God saved my life, I would help orphans. Right. So I have to be with them every single time. Even when I sleep, I think about them. I wake up in the middle of night writing down the dry, uh, or designing what project I'm going to do with them. Because it's like, it's my life. It is your life, and it's become a part of your life. You started this project with just over 200 kids. And how many are you at right now? How many kids are you really helping just about? We have, uh, uh, right now we have, uh, we have uh, over 3,000. Oh over two thousand. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic work. And what's one of the biggest challenges of getting funding? And if people do donate, which is we're encouraging you to donate and support this project. Yes, please. Where does the funds go, and how is it distributed? Uh, the funds, the funds go first. All your donations is tax deductible. We are five hundred one c three. The funds goes directly. You go to my website. Why do I exist? Dot org. Uh, you donate from there or they can go to your website beyondfocusmedia.com uh, um, yeah so you donate from there so the fund um, my sponsor my sponsor organization which is the Shout of Joy Ministry mm -hmm. shoutofjoyministry.com they are the one who help to, to, to how they call it finance right um, and then uh, Raise money and all those things? No, they do finance and then uh, I forget the word to use. I know contab commercial contabilità, accounting. Accounting. My goodness. Yeah, accounting. So um, so I focus in promoting and raising awareness. And I go out there to talk to people, to fundraise money. People give donations. They can give cash. They can give, they can give check. Um, and then uh, they can even donate online. Mm hmm so the money we raise, we send back to Rwanda. We we have different programs in Rwanda. We have English program, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we have uh, also um, trauma training, and then uh, we have uh, education for peace program, mm -hmm. where we educate children how peace is very important in our lives, and then also we have a uh, uh, we we have a. Um, Business, business uh, training for young adults. Mm -hmm. Now I'm planning to have uh, uh, to have a connections with some entrepreneurship schools here and a professor to see how we can design a, a quick material to help orphans, adult orphans in Rwanda to learn about business. Mm -hmm. And then you can find the people can give them more fund. Now your hard work has paid off because you've been recognized and received some awards. Why don't you tell us about that? Um, as you will see in the clip, video clip, I of received course. the proclamation from uh, 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 New York State Assembly. New York State Assembly. I went to Albany to receive that. I was uh, when the uh, um, assembly women uh, Gibson, she stood up uh, <laughs> in the middle of all assembly uh, in Albany uh, talking about little me here. I was like, wow. You remember where in the Bible when Jesus was baptized and then. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, John, John, John Baptist, when John Baptist was baptized, Jesus, and then the voice come from mm -hmm. heaven said, this is my beloved son to whom I am well pleased. When a gypsum, uh, a Vanessa assembly woman, she called, she called my name among of those assembly members. I was like, wow, I felt that. Uh, you that felt that joy. moment. It is good uh, when uh, you get recognition. But when I started in my work, even every day, I don't do it for recognition. I, I had no idea that in New York City, really people would recognize me. But it is beautiful when you see people uh, tribute. Like, uh, it's, it's like they hear your message. They, mm -hmm. they, they understand what you, 
you are you are trying to accomplish, which is really good for the orphans in Rwanda because they see that uh, they are not alone. Like during the genocide, everybody left Rwanda. That's why the horrible genocide was like that. But now the orphans, when they see that you are receiving this recognition, they are like okay, the world really care. And it, it's very important, and the work that you're doing, I know you definitely need the help. So please let everybody know how they can get in contact with you. You have, you're have you very active on Facebook and all the social media. Let everybody know about that. Yeah, people can go to my website, whydoiexist.org. Yes, whydoiexist.org. They can even email me, uh, claudinepeace at gmail.com. Claudinepeace, peace be with you peace gmail.com at gmail.com you can even call me my number is 347 465 4045 347 465 4045 my uh, um, facebook account you can go my la, or my name marie claudine mukamabano marie it's like mary with i e mm -hmm. claudine c l a u d i n e Mukama Wano is M U K A M A B A N O. Now I am about to release my new book, audio book, mm -hmm. The Power of Social Media. Uh, be yourself, change somebody's life today. You can even Google the power of social media. I, I am 100% that I'm the one who <laughs> first to produce this book because uh, it's, a, it's a vision I get from God. Uh, God, when God gives you vision, All He gives time. it to you by yourself. He doesn't share the vision to other people. So um, be yourself, change somebody's life today. I saw how um, through social media we can uh, get influence, that get that going, and then uh, meet make it many make it people. work. Well, mm -hmm. we're out of time for this episode. I just want to say thank you so much, Claudine Mukumabano, who is our special guest for the evening. And we'll definitely bring you back for part two because you're so interesting and very informative. So we'll love to have you back yet again. Claudine Mukumabano was my guest right here from the Rwandan Orphans Project. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. We'll be back same time, same place next week. I'm Lydia Patel. Thank you. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.